Hello and welcome to the GraphQL tutorial. Let's get started with creating new ASP.NET Core web application. I will name it Real Estate Manager. Just click OK. Here you need to check Web API and click Enter. And now, when the solution is set up, we can add five projects inside of it. The first one we already have. This web app will be our web API. So the second one, the data access project, which will be our repository layer. We'll create their queries to database, basically. So next, we're gonna make a database project and it will be a standard database configuration and connection classes. The third one, types, will be a special project for GraphQL types. I will explain this concept to you later. And the last one, the utilities project, it is a project for some helper classes. I like to start projects with describing entities and creating database. Let me remove this empty class and add models folder into database project. Our first entity should be property. We can add it inside models folder and it will consist of some properties. Like the first one, the ID and it will be our unique key. The second one, string name for the name of the property. The city where the property is placed, also on which street. What is the value of the property as a decimal, we should specify it. And which family lives there. And that's for now. If we are already during model creating process, we can add the second model, the payment. Payment should consist of integer key ID, the value of the payment as a decimal, and when the payment were created, for example, where the entity was created by the system, so the date created. Also the overdue date and the Boolean property which says if the payment was paid. And after adding our models, we can start with creating DB context and name the class real estate context. It should be a public class and should inherit from DB context. Add reference to Microsoft Entity Framework Core and let's just add the constructor. And in, inside of it, we should add the generic type DB contexts options and pass there our real estate context. And also give this instance to the base class. And when we've got it, we can specify the two DB sets for the properties, the first one, and the second one for the payments. And also we should add the reference to models in order to use the model classes. Now it is a good time to create the real estate context factory, which will inherit from iDesignTime DB context factory with real estate context as a generic parameter. This class is needed in order to get connection string from the appsettings.json file and reference it inside our SQL instance. We can get started with calling setBasePath method on the configuration builder class, but in order to do so, we need to install the Microsoft.extensions.configuration.json nuget package. Just add it to the project. And now 
we can pass inside this method current directory with the help of the directory class. Just reference to the upsettings.json file with the add json file method and call the build. Second, we need to create a DB context options builder in order to pass the connection string to our SQL server instance. So first, fetch the connection string from our configuration. And after that, we can call the method useSQLServer with the connection string, but here also a nugget package is needed, and it is called Microsoft Entity Framework Core SQL Server. And after installing it, everything should work fine. So at the end, just return the real estate context with our configuration passed to the constructor. As you can see here, I have passed real estate DB to get connection string method, but unfortunately, our app settings file is still empty. Let's fix it. You should have something like this in your file. We can leave it and add the connection string below it. I will paste it and you can find it in the resources on GitHub. Everything is attached in the description. We'll use local database in this project. So you need to have SQL Server installed on your machine. Nothing more is needed. The database will automatically be created. We need to add some data into our database in order to operate on some kind of information. To do so, I will create a new class and it will be called real estate seed data. It will be marked as a static class because it will contain an extension method which will be called when the database is initialized. It will be called ensure seed data and inside this bracket just pass this real estate context. Here we need to make a check if our database already contains some data, if there are any properties or if there are any payments. If not, we can paste here the seeded data to seed our database. I'm missing here some references, so let me quickly add it. You can copy the whole class from the GitHub, from the repository and paste it and don't worry about anything. Just here, I have made probably something wrong. I shouldn't be using the Microsoft Entity Framework core package, just the models, the property from the models. Let me fix it. I should remove this using here and now it should be working. But we've got still our payments marked as red because we don't have the collection of payments inside our properties. Just jump into it and add one more property, an I collection type of payment and it will be payments. Now everything should work fine. Just make sure to call the add range on the DB properties and pass the properties inside of it and also the save changes method. So the data will be seeded. We need to call this method in the startup class. First, pass the real estate context as a parameter to the configure method. And then we can call on it 
or method that we can that we have created the ensure seed data but first the reference and now everything should be working the last thing that we are missing is to register our db context we can do this inside the configure services method just on the services call the add db context pass the generic parameter as our real estate context and inside these brackets we need to create a lambda function and on the parameter call the use sql server we need to put inside the link to our connection string from the configuration class our connection string was called real estate db and after passing that we'll establish the connection between our application and our database so now it is very good time to create our first migration we need to open the package manager console select the database as our project and run the command add migration and the name of the migration just initial for our purposes but i have get an error here and i have read before about that it's because we don't have the reference to a package called microsoft entity framework core design this package will fix this error and if you run into the same issue you should just install this package run the migration one more time and everything should work fine and as you can see the migration has been generated we've got our structure of our database in migration code so now just update database and our database should look as we have designed it we can check it in the sql server object explorer if you open it on your local db refresh it you will see new created real estate database with tables payments and properties of course these tables are empty now but after running our application first time the data will be seeded so that's all for this video we did a really good job we have fully completed the database project and in the next videos we are going to focus more on the GraphQL functionality. If you like this video, don't hesitate to subscribe to be up to date with newest content.